Hey everyone, I hope you are doing really well. My name is Sandy and I am coming to you today from my studio which is by the lakeside in Ontario, Canada. It's been a while since I have sat down again. I've been extremely busy, buried underneath project bags, sewing, pressing for the last month or so. But I'm really excited to be back today because I have a lot of knitting updates that I want to share with you. I have been going through quite a bit of purging, frogging, and just kind of regrouping on what I want to knit for this upcoming season. If you are looking for me elsewhere online, I will leave all the places that you can find me down below. And towards the end of this episode, I will share some of the new project bags that will be coming to the shop tonight, which is Friday, October 21st at 7 p.m. I also have a sneak peek of a new bag, a new leather bag that I've been designing and just basically dreaming about for more than a year. I've been sharing sneak peeks of it on Instagram, but I thought I would give a little bit of a close-up look as to how I'm using it and what it looks like. So let's get started. I have quite a few updates with knitting. It all started last weekend, which was actually Rhinebeck weekend. And even though I did not go, it did look amazing. I really enjoyed watching everyone that visited post photos and videos on Instagram. I missed it. But I did have a great time gathering with some friends for our second annual Rhinebeck North gathering. I went to my friend Eric's house and met up with Ramona and Christina and myself and we all brought some food and knitting and we just enjoyed the most amazing afternoon chatting and knitting and just kind of refilling our cups. It's been a while since we have all been able to gather together. Summer was just really busy for everyone and it was so nice to get together again. We had a great time. And while I was there, I was really thinking about my knitting projects. There was one that I actually brought and I was just overwhelmed by this feeling of not wanting to knit on it, not just then, but at all. And so I came home and I decided on Sunday morning to pull out every single project bag with a whip in it or basket from all over the house. There were some in the family room, in the front room, my bedroom, in here, and I just pulled out every single whip that I could find. I spread them all out on my big cutting and packing table here. It was quite a, a disaster. It was complete chaos. I actually filmed it for a Patreon video and it was kind of nerve wracking sharing it because it had gotten so out of control that it was embarrassing. And I am not one to judge anyone for having a lot of projects on the go. I really thrive when I pick out a new bag, a new yarn, start a new project. I find it exciting and creative, but every once in a while it can get a little bit out of hand if I don't streamline and edit. And I think it's because part of the process for me is choosing all of the components that go into a project. And sometimes I start that project and I realize I might just not want to knit it. The actual process isn't that enjoyable for me and if it lingers for a really long time I might decide that it's not really the style for me either. So I really took a long hard look at all of my projects and in the end I don't have them because I frogged them and put everything away. I think I frogged seven projects which felt like huge relief. A weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I put needles and notions away. I found things that I had completely forgotten about or thought that I lost. I had all kinds of little hand bombs and lip bombs all over the place. I folded up all of the empty project bags. I went up, wound up all of my yarn and I felt free to move on with the projects that are really, really important to me for fall and winter, and there are a few. So I think I will start by sharing which projects 
made the cut which ones I am heavily focusing on right now as my main whips. Then I have a couple that are kind of at the bottom of that list and I'm hoping to get to soon. And then I will share which projects I ended up frogging. I don't even really have a great reason as to why. They're all beautiful projects. You might remember them from previous videos or Instagram. And I felt bad about a couple of them, but at the end, of the day I feel so much better with less lingering all over the house and a couple of really meaningful projects to focus on and don't get me wrong I still have quite a few so let's get started the first whip that I'm really excited to work on I am enjoying enjoying every single stitch of this project is my wave of change jacket by Denise Byron of Byron Handmade. This is using a bulky yarn and I think it is just the project I need for this time of year. I've been really excited to knit on a sweater and the fact that it is a bulky yarn has been a huge blessing in disguise. And the reason for that is I don't have a ton of knitting time at the moment, the last two weeks I've been really busy sewing and at the end of days where I am sewing quite a bit, knitting is not usually something I have a lot of energy for. I have been trying to knit at least one or two rows a day and most days I've managed and the nice thing about that is because it is bulky, you can see the progress and that really gives me a push to keep going and it has me excited to finish this so I did the um, body and I am on to the rib at the bottom hem I think I'm making the second size in the pattern I think and I think this one will stretch out a little bit when I block it because it is um, a super wash yarn and I have tried it on. It is super cute. It's a little bit cropped and I think it's going to be really cute. I'm in love with this color. I think it's gorgeous. This is Sweet Skein O' Mine. Let's see if I can get that there. And the color is Pass the Merlot. It is really soft easy to knit with. It's creating the most beautiful fabric and I'm loving it. So this is my main project that I've been working on. I am really focused on trying to get this body done. Hopefully this weekend I will be able to. And then I am going to, I think the next part is to pick up stitches for the um, kind of like a placket or like a facing band on the front which is going to add a little bit more um, width to the front because right now it doesn't actually close up and I don't think I'm going to be adding buttons or anything to this I really like the look of it just kind of thrown on casually over just a simple t-shirt or maybe a blouse and I'm looking forward to having this for the colder months I think it's going to be really pretty The second project that I have been focusing on that's taken a little bit of a backseat but it is definitely one that I'm excited about is in one of my new leather bunny bags. I have a couple of new colors in the shop. And this one is called Avocado. And in here I have the Ridgeway Capelet by Clinton Hill Cashmere. This was my birthday cast on in September. Then things got a little bit busy, but I have been trying to work on this as much as I can here and there. And it's also turning out beautifully. I'm making the smaller size in the pattern. There are two sizes using the Clinton Hill Cashmere Bespoke DK. And this is the color Cognac. 
I'm very excited to have this one for the winter months as well. I think it will be perfect when I go to indoor soccer games because it can be quite chilly in the soccer dome or even just jumping in and out of the car. You don't want to have anything too bulky. This will be perfect. So I've shared this one a couple of times already. It's a definite favorite. It's not going anywhere and I'm kind of alternating between my sweater and this one for the most part. I'm really enjoying those two projects. I think the last project that is actually an active whip is my Sophie scarf and that one is in my rose gold bunny bag. I think I shared this one as well and surprisingly I'm going to share my thoughts on this one. I know that this project is all over the internet right now. Everyone and their mother is knitting this project. It appears to be super fun quick and it is and I'm enjoying it or I enjoyed I think I enjoyed it up to about the halfway point and all of a sudden I just started to feel not that interested in it anymore and I don't know if it's because my other projects are really grabbing my attention and I'm anxious to finish those but this one just sort of took a back seat I am persisting. I did decide to do the larger size one because I thought it would be fun to wrap this one around twice. So this is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knits. I am using a beautiful yarn, or two beautiful yarns, from Chelsea Yarns. I think this is a Rhinebeck colorway. I think. I can't remember now. I know I shared it previously, but, or no, this one might be um, exposed brick. And then this is the Rhinebeck mohair from a couple of years ago. It is creating a very beautiful color and fabric. I'm just not as excited about it as I was at the beginning, but it's a small project. So this one made the cut. I am going to finish it up and um, we'll see. I might decide to do the, um, the smaller size at one point later on, maybe after Christmas, but for right now, I feel like bigger projects and sweaters are really on my mind. And so this one remains, but it's kind of on the back burner. The next project is one that I don't really consider an active project, but I am not letting go of it. I keep it in my studio here for any of those days where I need an afternoon break and I bring up a coffee and I want to sit down and maybe zone out for a few minutes and focus on something different like a knitting project. And so this project is that one for me. It is a patterned project but it's not really difficult and I can pick it up whenever I feel like it as long as I just note where I am in the pattern. This is my hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli and it's not actually um, a very large shawl and so I feel like this one I could be done well, I would like to say soon, but I know it's not going to be soon because I'm not focusing on it right now, but this is definitely one that I see finishing at some point in the next couple of months. And so I kept this one. And when I finish some of my larger projects, I am going to try to work on this one. The yarn for this is also very, very beautiful. It is another Chelsea Lux yarn. This is Lux DK in the color Sunflower, which is one of my favorite colorways that she does. It is so rich and beautiful. It has a real um, kind of deepness to it. I don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera, but it's really beautiful. And I think this one is a great piece to add to my wardrobe. So this is one of the few shawls that has remained on the needles. 
my camera just died and I had to switch out the card. I think I was just saying that I did also keep my Bayou Shawl, which is a beautiful linen quill project that I've had on the needles for a couple of years. I love that project, but it's more of a summer project for me and I did have plans to work on it every Sunday this past summer but things got a little bit hectic around here. I had to do some unexpected traveling and some family things came up. And so that one was forgotten, but not forever because I need that project in my life. That will come out again probably next spring. And one of the other projects that I've kept that's kind of on the back burner, but it's not going anywhere is in this project bag. This is the Second Avenue Wrap, which is a pattern by Amy Miller, using a beautiful kit that I got from one of my favorite yarn shops, which is the Knitting Loft in Toronto. It's plucky yarns, plucky knitter yarns. I love it. I love this pattern. I actually have a completed Second Avenue Wrap and I loved it so much that I cast on a second one, which is very unusual for me. But that just tells you how much I love this project. It is really great to just pick up for an afternoon knitting break. And I leave it here in my studio, which is kind of close to my bedroom. So if I'm looking for a knitting project at night and I'm in my room, I can just grab this one and knit a few rows without really thinking too much or getting lost in the pattern. I love this one. The yarns are beautiful. I can't remember all of the colors, but it was a kit that the Knitting Loft put together. Super pretty. So this one isn't going anywhere, but it's kind of one of those projects that will last a little bit longer for me. Then I have two little baskets that I set up can be moved around a house from room to room and I can just pick up the projects whenever I want. So this first one here is my little sock knitting basket. I have quite a few sock whips, a few too many. I feel like I've cleaned off my needles of sock projects and everything that I have left on needles is something I do want to finish at some point. So those are all tucked away in a bigger basket underneath my table. And whenever I want to finish something, I can pull one out and continue to work on it. So in this basket, I just have two pairs of socks that I'm focusing on right now. The first one is this beautiful DK weight shorty sock that I shared with you in my last video because I had just completed it. It's called After Dinner Mints by Legacy Fiber Arts. It's getting very sunny in here. I hope you can see how beautiful that is. I love this sock. So I finished that one and since then I have cast on the second one and just done a little bit of the leg. I actually think it's time to put in my heel, which is probably why I stalled again but I would really like to work on this one because I do have a Halloween cast on sock that I'm hoping to start on Halloween night. So this is in this cute little basket and this basket is, um, I think it's called Big Blue Moma, I think. And then the second project that I have in here is another one I've shared before. It's beautiful and it is a textured or pattern sock. It is called the Crunkled Socks. The pattern is by Kay Jones. And this beautiful yarn is a Tannis Fiber Arts yarn that was a gift from my friend Andy. So I haven't really worked on this in a really long time, but this was the one sock whip that I thought deserved a little bit of attention. And so I popped it into this basket. So I have one textured sock and one vanilla sock to pick up whenever I want. And in here, I just have a little measuring tape, 
I've got the patterns for each. So the one is the crunkled sock pattern from Kay Jones. And the other one is the DK Vanilla Sock by Kate Litton from The Crazy Sock Lady. I love this little basket because I am working on some larger projects right now. This one hasn't been getting used very much, but I do have it just sitting on the doorknob of my studio door to grab whenever I can. This little basket here, I also set up with a blanket project. When I pulled out all of my whips, I found three blankets. I kept the jelly roll blanket, which is in a little bunny bag on the main floor, and I feel like that is a long-term project. I don't feel any guilt about having it. I did pull out and rip apart one of the blankets I started, and then I decided to keep this project because I love it. This blanket is called the Cozy Comfort Throw. The pattern is by Molly Klatt from a homespun house. I haven't worked on this in a really long time. Honestly, I think I forgot about it, but it is squishy and plump and gorgeous. And it's also super easy to pick up and knit at any time. And when I go downstairs in the morning before everyone wakes up and I make my coffee and I sit in the chair in the front room just quietly by myself. I'm usually a little bit too groggy to start knitting right away and I just spend that time thinking about my priorities for the day, what we have going on with the kids, if there are appointments, what I need to do for work, what's for dinner, all of those things start rushing through my brain. And I like to just sit there and enjoy my coffee and think. And this is a really good project that you can work on while you are doing that. So I love this. I cleaned up all of the minis that I had gathered for it. I put in a few fresh ones in here. I think some of them are from a homespun house. Some of them are Chelsea Lux yarns from Advents. And I even have a couple from Legacy Fiber Arts. I think this is one of... There's from a beautiful fall mini bundle they had. And what I really love about this project is that you alternate your minis and you hold them double with one consistent yarn throughout. And so you really get um, a beautiful look that kind of carries each color along to the next one. I think it is so pretty. And the yarn that I chose is just an undyed fingering weight that I'm holding double with all of these colorful fingering weight minis from advent calendars and just little minis that I've found in my collection. So it's a wonderful project to use up minis. It is really easy to pick up at any time. It doesn't matter how much time has passed, you cannot lose yourself in that project. And I just got it tucked in here with a couple of really fun minis and a little notions pouch in case I need scissors or anything at all. So these are my two little baskets that I am loving and they're really easy to move around the house. As for knitting projects that I ripped out and frogged, I have quite a few and I think while I was sitting here I even thought of another one that isn't on my list. Some of them had barely been started. Some of them I had more than half done, but I decided to just rip them out and I'm very happy about it. My Vertices Unite is one of them that was kind of a tough decision because I was just past the halfway mark, I think. There was a lot of knitting in that the yarn was really beautiful. It was La Bien Aime, a five skein kit that I had purchased a year or two ago. And I really enjoyed that project for the process of knitting at the time. It was during lockdown. I cast on with a few friends. We were all working on a shawl at the same time. And it was a very therapeutic knit, but I lost interest put it away. I've pulled it out a couple of times to work on it. And every time I pull it out now, when I look at it, I don't really like the color combination. It's a little bit washed out 
for me and my coloring. And I don't think I'm going to wear it. I don't really enjoy knitting it anymore. And I decided I think I'm going to frog it. I didn't frog it yet because I have a friend that I'm hoping, really, really hoping will want to continue it. So she's going to come over next week. I'm going to show it to her if she wants it. It's all hers and I really hope that she loves it as it is and my knitting doesn't have any mistakes in it and so she might take that one from me. We'll see. The other one that I frogged, which was kind of a difficult decision because I love it, is the Something Cozy Sweater. It was a really easy knit. I had the most beautiful yarn from Chelsea Yarns in one of my favorite colors called Copilot. It's this beautiful olivey but bright green. But it's a sweater that you knit in pieces and then have to sew together, which I know is not the end of the world. But the process of that one just wasn't flowing for me and I didn't really feel like picking it up very much. I just knew that it was going to sit in that bag for a really long time and it may or may not ever get done and so I decided to frog it, wind up the yarn and I will find a beautiful new project for that. Hopefully another sweater to use that yarn because I really want that color of sweater in my wardrobe. So that was the second one. The blanket that I frogged was the Polygon blanket which again I think was like a process knitting project for me. I loved it at the time. I really enjoyed picking out the colors. I loved knitting each little polygon. It's a project by Tin Can Knits. But I had only done two and a bit. And when I pulled out that bag, I just felt like there were so many notions in the bag. I don't know when on earth I would knit that many polygons. Never mind, sew them all together. It's a great idea in theory, but I knew it just wasn't the project for me. So I let that one go. I think I actually kept uh, one of the polygons to use as a coaster or to pin up on a bulletin board, but other than that, it's gone. I had started The Shift Cowl by Andrea Maori a couple of years ago. I think I started it on a trip to Cape Cod. I have the most beautiful spin cycle yarns, but I had about two or three inches of it done. I just never picked it up. And I decided that it might be a project I want to do one day. It probably will. But it's just been sitting in a bag for too long and it's weighing me down. So I unraveled it, wound up the yarn, put it back on the shelf. And if I decide to make that again one day, I will just start fresh, which I think is probably better because I have no idea where I was. And I think I was knitting it a little bit tightly. So I'm very happy to have that one off the needles. It will probably return one day, but for now, bye-bye. I did talk about frogging my pressed flowers shawl. I think in my last video, I love that final piece. I would love to have that in my wardrobe. The yarn was beautiful but I did not enjoy knitting that project. And of course, I unraveled it on Sunday, and then a little bit later this week, I was watching Gina from Skein Cocaine. She had a podcast, and she was sharing her second completed one, and I felt a little bit bad for a moment, but then I reminded myself that not every knitting project is for every knitter, and so I'm happy that that one is off my needles. I had also started a co-book hat years and years ago. Never picked it up again. Just wasn't, it just wasn't in the cards. So that one, gone. I know I have another sweater. I think I started the, um, the neck rib. I cannot find it anywhere. It was, I can't even remember the name of it. It was a color work sweater that I was going to make for the holidays beautiful yarns, great pattern. It might have been called the Stagecoach or something like that from Caitlin Hunter. It's very beautiful, but I have not picked that up since over a year ago. 
I just, I need to let go of it, but I need to find the bag. I know I have quite a few bins in my closet that I couldn't really get to. It might be in there, and when I find it, that one is going to be off the needles. I think that's pretty much everything that I frogged, and I don't have any regrets about it. I did, for a moment, consider unraveling my half and half triangle wrap. Shocking, I know. It's another one that I just have not felt like picking up and it's kind of dragging on. I decided to keep it. I've tucked it away for now. I cleaned up the bag. I'm going to try to focus on some of my current projects, see how I feel in the winter. If I do not pick up that project again, I might have to frog it. I don't know. It's another one I love the final piece, but the knitting of it, not so much. And the less things on my needles or the less project bags that are filled and piling up, the better it is for me at the moment. Those are all of the whips that I am concentrating on right now and even more importantly, enjoying. I'm really excited to finish a couple of them because I also have some dream knitting on my mind that I'm really looking forward to for the fall and winter season. I am not typically a sweater knitter. I like to maybe cast on one sweater a year and finish it. I tend to start a couple, but they don't go anywhere. But I've had some garments on my mind for this upcoming season. I'll share some of that dream knitting a little bit later. For now, I think I will share the new project bags that will be dropping in the shop tonight. I have two that I've had before in the shop, but the rest of them, or most of them, are brand new fabrics. I've had them purchased and ready to be made into bags for months and months, but things have just been so busy. Things keep getting in the way. I am very relieved to finally have them all ready to go and in the shop tonight. So for large project bags, I am bringing back just a few of the large signature denim bags. They have a bit of a chevron pattern. Unfortunately, this is one of my signature fabrics and it's been discontinued. I have a little bit left to make a few here and there and to use on the flat leather clutch that I put the denim on. But after that, it's all gone. I've run into so many cases of things being unavailable and discontinued in the last few months, which is one of the reasons why there have been some little hiccups with my shop. Another one was the small rose gold stork scissors that I used to carry. I think they've been discontinued. I do have some beautiful new scissors in the shop. It took me a while to find the right ones, but I'm really happy with what I ended up with. The other large project bag is this beautiful kind of coppery geometric. It reminds me of macaroni and I love it. This one is staying with me. I think it is so pretty and it has a sparkly gold tassel. So those are the two large project bags that will be in the shop. Then I have three small project bags. One of them is the golden hour bag that I brought to the shop, I think two years ago. It was a collaboration that I did with Christina, the cozy knitter. She dyed up this beautiful yarn to coordinate with it. I don't have the actual kits. I just have the bags this time because I found a batch of the fabric that I was kind of hoarding, such a pretty fabric. And I decided to just finish it up and make a few more of them. I think they're super pretty. They have a metallic kind of brush stroke in them and a very pretty color palette. I love the peach and the navy and the gold. So those will be in the shop. And the two new project bags are very fun and colorful. The first one is this pretty teacup print on a blue background. The inside of this is 
a gray gingham. And I love when I'm knitting to just fold over the top and use it kind of like a little yarn basket beside me. I think this is a really pretty print. There are even a couple of birds on some of the teacups, which I love. And then the last one is this beautiful multicolored geometric floral. It's some of my favorite colors. I absolutely love purple and it's kind of hard to find fabrics with purple in them. I really like this kind of rusty outline with the pink and the peach and there's a teal green in the back. I think it's gorgeous. This zipper is one of my favorite colors ever. I just never get a chance to use it because it's not a very common color that's found in prints. This one has a beige gingham lining and I think it's so pretty. So those are all of the project bags that will be in the shop tonight. Along with those, I've been replenishing the leather bunny bags. I have lots and lots of the little mini zip totes, which are great to throw in your purse with change or credit cards and things like that. I've got four brand new colors of leather that I introduced into the shop, I think a week or two ago, maybe two weeks ago. Um, one of them is this gorgeous sand color. I love this one, this is mine. Um, the other one was the avocado green that I shared earlier. And I just grabbed some of the small tote bags that are in the shop to show you the new colors. So this is a small tote bag in the new blueberry color. Here is the small tote in avocado. This is the sand color. And the last one is this beautiful color that I've called Merlot. I think they're all so pretty. I'm really happy with them. And in the background or behind the scenes for the last, I don't know how many months, I have been dreaming up a new bag design. I've been wanting something that falls in between the large everything tote bag, which is quite big, fits everything you could ever want, I think. And then the small tote, which is this one, which is a really good kind of everyday carry. I wanted something that fell in between those two bags that could be used as a project bag that you wanna carry a few extra things with. So maybe a sweater project and you've got your pattern and a notions pouch and maybe even a board if you put your pattern on a board that has color work or a chart on it. Um, a little notebook, pen, all the little things that you'd like to carry with a bigger project or maybe even a blanket project. I also wanted this bag to do double duty and be a journaling and planner bag. If you are into those things, you've probably seen a few of them around. It could also be called a couch bag where you carry all of your little pencil pouches, your notebooks, um, your mini printers and things like that all in one bag and you can move it around to work on the kitchen table or on the couch or at a desk. Lastly, I wanted it to be pretty enough to stand alone and be used as a handbag. And so after much thinking and um, exploring different options, I finally came up with the final design. And after the first prototype was done, I thought it was perfect and I changed absolutely nothing. So here is the first bag. I think it is really functional and pretty. It's got pockets on each side so that you can put notebooks in it or a couple of pens. Uh, you could slide your phone in here. I've got my Wave of Change jacket in here. Now that the project is a little bigger, I wanted to try it out. I've got my project notebook in here with the pattern, the sweater, all of the rest of the yarn. 
and a notions pouch and there's still room if I want to tuck in my reading glasses or hand balm a few things there is a pocket on the inside just like my other tote bags have and a d-ring if you want to attach something now I like to keep my leather bags unlined as much as possible because I like to keep the weight of it down and I also really like the look of the leather when it's unlined you just you get all of the natural goodness of how the leather wants to sit when it's unlined and I just have a personal preference for that so this is the new design the handles are a little different than my other bags they are rolled so they feel really comfortable in your hand and they have these beautiful gold um, rivets attaching and then the scissors logo is right on the front I'm really really happy with it this was the first one and I've been enjoying using it for a few different things but I've finally been able to commit to keeping my knitting project in here because I have a second sample which I have now set up as my journaling and planner bag so this is a lot heavier and I'm testing it out and I'm thinking that it is also perfect for this so this is in the blueberry color I've got my mini printer in a pouch over here I haven't got anything in this pouch just yet but you can see inside I've got quite a few things so far I've got my Hobonichi A5 journal I've got my extra gratitude A5 journal I've got a Hobonichi drawer pouch I think is what it's called that has all of my stickers and um, bits of washi tape I've got one of my pencil pouches in here and I've also got my fountain pens in this little pouch so it's super roomy it's really nice um, to sit beside you on the couch or even on a table I wanted it to be uh, a really good height so that if you have it on the table beside you I like to work in my dining room you can easily kind of prop it open and get into it with no trouble I feel like this small tote is a really great project bag or couch bag but it doesn't sit as easily on a table and it's a bit deeper so you can see the difference here the new bag is just a little bit wider and shorter which I think is great to just kind of put on your arm and carry as a handbag as well it's not really a shoulder bag you can squeeze it on if you need to but I really like the look of handles that are not too big I just feel like they look so much more stylish on a bag like this and I'm really happy with the final design I am hoping to have the four new colors in this bag sometime in November along with maybe one or two other colors that I already carry probably the traditional brown color that I do maybe the black um, and we will see I think if someone wants a particular color um, I might take like a special order for that but for the most part I'm going to be streamlining the colors that it comes in just so that it's a little bit easier to manage at first and then we'll see how it goes I don't know if you caught a glimpse but I have a couple of other things I've been working on I've got a new wristlet that is hopefully coming out around the same time and I've been playing around with a couple of ideas for little keychains so I've got lots of things in the works I've even got a really nice streamlined card holder that will have a little ring on it so you can attach it to a wristlet and then put it on the d-ring on the inside of the bag so lots of exciting new things are coming hopefully in November and um, for now I've got lots of project bags coming to the shop tonight a lot of the leather has been restocked the shop is pretty full and there are plenty of bags so I'm hoping that this final stretch of sewing and leather updates will get me through 
until Christmas bags arrive. I've got Christmas fabrics starting to be cut. Um, I had to put them away this week so I could finish up for this shop update, but the Christmas fabrics are in the works and hopefully the bags, I've got two prints for Christmas project bags this year. I love them. I will probably start sharing some sneak peeks of those on Instagram in the next couple of weeks. And I will have new leather designs coming in November. So lots of shop updates. Even though I haven't been around here that much, it's because I've been really busy working on products for the shop. I'm also posting weekly videos on Patreon if you are interested in more of the home content that I sometimes film. And just to note, I do have plans to film Vlogmas again this year, assuming nothing else comes up. I've got advent calendars that are starting to arrive. I'm really excited about those. I'm thinking about what to get the boys this year, what I'm going to put in Glenn's advent calendar, and I'm really looking forward to December. I love filming, especially because I'm lucky enough to work from home. It makes it a bit easier. I have really grown to love filming every day and December is pretty much the only time I can seem to do it. So I will be around for Vlogmas. I'm going to put all of my stuff away because it's pretty much everywhere. I have a couple of favorite things I want to share with you and then some dream knitting as well. I have two dream knitting projects that I can't stop thinking about. They are both garments and I'm waiting for yarn to arrive for each of them. The first one is this stunning sweater. It's called the Putney Sweater by Amy Loudon, who is from Taylorus Studios, and she's also one half of the dying dynamo behind Dandelion and Dogwood. Amy's been posting some videos recently on YouTube again, and I've been enjoying them so very much. And she shared a couple of colors of her Dandelion and Dogwood yarn, and I fell in love with one of them. I can't remember the name. It's like a rosy color and I'm waiting for that to arrive. So hopefully I will get my wave of change jacket finished in the next couple of weeks so that I can cast this one on. I think it's so very beautiful and it really looks like a wardrobe staple to me. I think just the overall shape of it is something I would wear so often. I can imagine having three or four of these in different colors. I really wanted to knit it in this color, but I thought for fun, I would pick something a little bit more colorful. And then if I do end up wanting to knit a second one, I think it will be in this color. So I'm definitely casting that one on as soon as possible. And I also have been thinking about vests so much lately. I don't think I have any. I have one kind of sleeveless, poncho style sweater in my wardrobe but I really love the look of a hand knit vest and this Stockholm slipover by Petite Knit is on my dream knitting list. I also have some yarn coming for this. As soon as it comes I will share a bit more about it. I think it will be a fun quick knit and it will look really pretty over a blouse at Christmas time. This is another one that just feels totally my style. It even looks cute over a t-shirt. So those are the two projects I have plans to cast on, but I really want to finish my wave of change jacket first and then also the, um, the Ridgeway capelet because those two projects are things I want in my wardrobe and I'm trying to use them to um, or I'm trying to use this dream knitting to motivate me to stay on top of current projects, not get too distracted or ahead of myself, but I feel like this is just the right number of whips and then dream knitting projects to keep me going. I have a couple of beauty products I wanted to share because I've been really enjoying them for the last few weeks or months. The first is this lip gloss from Dior. It is the Lip Maximizer one, and it looks kind of dark and deep in the tube, but
but it actually isn't. It's what I'm wearing today. It's one of my favorites. I really like just throwing on a lip gloss. I don't really use lipstick very much. And I think that this is color number six. There isn't a name on it, but I did get it at Sephora and I really like this formula. It's not sticky. It doesn't have a weird smell to it. And I think it's really pretty. It just kind of brightens up your whole face. And if you have been watching my videos for any length of time or paying attention to some of the other beauty favorites that I've shared, you probably know how much I love a good face mist or rose water for your face. I really, really love the fresh rose water spray. I think that's what it's called. And then I sort of moved towards the Thayer's rose spray that you can get at drugstores or at Target. I even have actually this one in my handbag just for freshening up. I just find it really, really nice to mist on my face. I also have super dry skin, so that's probably part of it. But I recently tried this one. I fell in love with the bottle, if I'm really being honest. And I was familiar with this company. It's an Italian company called Di Santa Maria Novella. They have a gorgeous, gorgeous store. I had been in one in Italy when I went many, many years ago, and I always regretted not picking something up. They have beautiful bars of soap and all kinds of stunning products. And I found this online somewhere and I wanted to give it a try and it is really, really nice. The only thing I don't love about it is it's not a spray and I do like to spray rose water on, but I just use a cotton pad and use this on my face in the evenings and sometimes in the mornings and I really love it. So I wanted to share these two because they are currently my favorite beauty items. I have two cookbook recommendations for you. I've been loving both of these books. One of them is a fairly new release that I picked up a few weeks ago. And the other one I've had for a little while and I honestly don't even remember if I've shared it with you before. So this could be a little repetitive, but I've been using it quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. And so I thought it was worth sharing. I feel like they are both perfect for this time of year. So the first one I picked up at the grocery store a few weeks ago, it's a fairly new release. It's called Cake and Loaf by Nikki Miller and Josie Rutterham. I didn't really know who they were when I picked it up, but I have since learned that they are um, a female run business based in Hamilton, Ontario, which is not very far from me at all. It's about an hour or an hour and 10 minutes away. So that was kind of exciting. And there are a lot of really nice recipes in here that I think are perfect for everyday baking, which is kind of my style. I don't, I always say, I don't think I really like baking, but I do when it comes to muffins, quick loaves, just really quick kind of easy baking that you can snack on throughout the day. There are a lot of really nice looking recipes in here and the ones that I've made so far turned out really good. This one was absolutely delicious and super simple to pull together. It's carrot loaf with dreamy cream cheese icing. Everybody loved it. There are a lot of things in here that are on my baking list for this fall. And so I thought I would just share a really quick flip through. I'm not going to go through the whole book because I think this video is already getting a little bit long and it's time for me to start dinner. So a quick flip through should give you an idea of how beautiful this book is. There are a couple of recipes towards the back here that are, um, they just involve a little bit more assembly, which I still think is quite nice. I feel like I'll be using the beginning of the book a lot more than this part, but there are a few things that I might try here for some special occasions. So it's a really beautiful book. I actually like that it's a soft cover. I just find these books really nice to carry around, put notes in and um, open up on the kitchen counter. 
So this is a favorite. It's really new, but I love it. This book, I think I picked up in the last year. And like I said, I might have mentioned this before, but I've really been using it more in the last couple of weeks for fall. And everything I've made from this book has been delicious. I love my slow cooker. I love my instant pot, my air fryer. I really love small kitchen appliances, but I, I will admit that any slow cooking or crock pot cookbook I've picked up in the past, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. It's really hard to find good slow cooker recipes. I'm all for a recipe that calls for a cream of condensed chicken soup or mushroom soup once in a while, but they're not my favorite. And other recipes for the slow cooker end up looking like mush or not having a ton of flavor that I find interesting, but this book is different. It is called Everyday Slow Cooking by Kim Laidlaw. It's another soft cover book, which I'm loving at the moment. And there are a lot of really good recipes in here. The balsamic pot roast is on my list to try. There's a lasagna in here that's not too complicated. A really simple beef bolognese sauce, beef stroganoff. I made this earlier in the week when I had a very busy studio and sewing day. And it was really nice to prepare something so comforting in the crock pot, which was the filling. And then at the end of the day, I just put it in a casserole dish and popped some puff pastry on top. It was a really nice meal at the end of a busy day. French dip sandwiches, I've made these before, delicious. There are a lot of great recipes in here. I have a pulled pork recipe I like to do in my Instant Pot, but I thought this might be a fun one to try in the crock pot. Chicken fajitas. And this farro with spring vegetables looks delicious. I don't know if the boys would really be into that, but I know I would. And there are a lot more recipes. I just felt like that was a good starting point to try and incorporate into my menu plan each week because I've been back on that track for fall. I try to plan out my menu on Sundays and have at least one dinner that I can do in the slow cooker or the instant pot and it is so helpful. It is time for me to wrap up this video so I can get dinner started. We are having homemade pizza and chicken wings tonight and I've got a couple of little things to just finish finalizing for the shop update tonight. Thank you so much for joining me today and listening to me while I carry on about all of my knitting projects and plans. And I will see you guys next time.